And good evening and welcome to the Tier 1 Women's Final here from Papineau, Quebec. It is the heavyweights, the Blue Bloods, no pun intended. <laughs> as is Le Bleu against Le Bleu Poot. Here from Montreal as we get ready for what should be a very sumptuous final here. Marie-Lou Boulon and Sarah Parker, two Hi. flamethrowers here. Now, I'll start with you, first of all. Your thoughts in this game here, we have an 8-0 team and a 7-1 roster as well. Uh, it's hard to say. Those two teams also play against uh, at the university level, and they played against at a tournament, and it's always back and forth. They always bring out the best of each other, so I'm really excited to see this game going. Sarah, you are a quarterback extraordinaire, and we have two fantastic flamethrowers in this game here. How important will the quarterback play be with these two teams today? I think both defense are, are stacked, so um, I think that today is going to um, really dictate uh, which quarterback makes the smartest decisions and the smartest reads. Could one mistake be the difference in this game here, ladies, and how this plays out? Definitely. Uh, the off both offense are very strong. Uh, I think their receiving units are uh, very dominant. Uh, they don't drop a lot of balls, so I would say yes, uh, any mistake can, can make a big difference uh, just because I think the offenses won't have any issues scoring, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Now, really we talk about the offenses here, we talk about both teams, there's seven games at least, they've scored 30 plus points here. Yep. If you are a gambler, are we going over in the total points tonight? Uh, I think so. I think we're going over it and they're both preparing for the Canadian Championship So they're gonna give everything try everything and I think it's gonna work Well a prelude indeed as we get ready now for the first play of the game here between BP and LB here and of course they played each other So Montreal starting with the ball and a nice pass to Badu, gaining almost 10 yards. So it's a nice start for Montreal. And I think Montreal are les bleus, right? Yeah. And UCAM is blue put. And I'm sorry if I'm going to call them Montreal and UCAM all day. It's just a habit. So again, Montreal sticking with some basic plays. Uh, I think it's uh, the style of uh, their coach, Francois Bougie. Just keep the basics, gain some confidence, and then later on try something new and uh, just gain some yards. I think we'll, well, we're trying to get this headset figured out here. As we'll get that figured out now. As hold on here, we'll be back here in two seconds. Here. So Montreal going with this tack formation on the right. A nice play by their snapper, but I think she lost the flag at the beginning. So when she catches the ball, the play is dead. But she did get the first down. Halfway point, first down and up ahead, and now we talk about the first down and Le Bleu off to a fine start here, ladies, and how it's played out so far in their first couple plays. Yeah, and that's what they do best. They have some simple plays, and they get Sandrine, their quarterback, in the, with some confidence, and they just drive until uh, they can score a touchdown, and I think they're going to get in a good position to do that, the first drive. We talk about Sandrine Gobe Huo, 37 touchdowns this year, almost 2,000 yards passing. And now looking, waiting, patience, going down this far side, and that's caught, and out of bounds it goes. And that will be inching closer and closer towards the first down here, Sarah. Yeah, so that was a very nice route, uh, slowing down her, her path when she saw the defense coming towards her and making that uh, diving catch and keeping her feet in bounds. Very impressive. These two teams played each other during the regular season, and a seven-point difference. In fact, both teams here did not score 30 points, so not... Often that happens here with these teams being held in park 
And now looking to go into the end zone to get the first six points of this opening drive. Looking towards the left, we're looking towards the middle. Waiting sack for a loss and a huge sack for BP to come at a crucial point of this matchup. Yeah, and this is not Sandrine, uh, their quarterback uh, strength. She's doing great reads and uh, great throws. But as soon as she gets too much pressure and too fast, uh, she, she's not really fast on her feet. So hopefully uh, Montreal is going to have uh, a play to contest that. And we'll see what happens now. It's now even deeper than before. BP playing close towards the end zone. A stack formation to the right. We are looking towards the middle, waiting, launching, firing. That's picked off and dropped. And we've talked about turnovers here, ladies, and that could be one that could have been disastrous for Le Bleu. I think she saw it coming, but she said, whatever, all out, it's uh, the last play anyways, and they're going to pick it up at their uh, line of the five. And with that, it is going to go back to... BP now as they'll get their first crack at this for the game here. Emmanuel Bronsal, 34 touchdowns, almost 1,900 yards passing this year for the flamethrower. Looking towards the deep side, and that is picked off down the sideline to come. One play to beat, and a big play coming through this time, and an INT from Bastien, and that's a huge turnover going in favor for Le Bleu. Absolutely, and you can see Alex Dujardin really happy on the sideline, their coach. He's, he has a great football IQ, and he, he used to play UCAM a lot. So I think he was expecting it, and uh, he's just really proud of his shot. <laughs> Way to give their offense a second shot. And that's the one thing now. We talk about the margin of error being razor sharp right now, and that could be lost six points for, for BP, getting that first INT going against them. And now the second series here, as we have a stack towards the right of the formation. You're all looking, waiting, going towards the right, and that is incomplete. Too much meat on that pass. It's in for Renault. It'll be second down coming up. As we're now inside 17 minutes here. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a disjoint to start here, ladies. Uh, is, could it be nerves in the early goings right now for both teams? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think they're a very tight-knit uh, tight -knit unit. I think they execute really well. Uh, they just have to get past those uh, those nerves, and everything should be good. Second down. Go over here looking towards the middle. That's caught through the jungle of blue, that is, and it'll be close to first down here. And Badu now with that catch, she had 25 for the season, and now into towards the goal line for maybe six points here. What play would you call here if you're the quarterback? I uh, just keep it simple. It's Montreal's uh, best uh, strategy, and it's working against uh, Blue Pud right now. Patience crossing, yeah. touchdown Renault, and it is confirmed. It is a touchdown and a 6 nothing lead here. Ladies, what did you see in that play here on that cross from Albert Renault? Uh, it's hard to stop when a, when a girl runs across the field, uh, at uh, especially at the speed that she was running. Uh, it's and very the hard size to cover. she has. The <laughs> size she has also. So uh, I think, yeah, the the combination of uh, the space that she takes and the speed that she had was pretty hard to stop. And a big six points right now for Le Bleu as they get off the flyer right now to get the first six of the game. Wide holding to the width. It's Kurt Marsh now to the right side. Looking towards the right and back in the end zone and well defended with the telescopic arms. And it will remain 6 nothing here. So with BP back on offense here, Marilou, what can be a key for them? Do they keep it simple here and try to matriculate the ball and then going for the deep pass as they did the first time? Absolutely. But Emmanuel's uh, strength is also the deep balls. Uh, she likes to have big plays and capitalize on that. But I think uh, here against a defense uh, with, like Montreal, you cannot attempt that uh, right away. We also had five TDs, one INT on Sunday's win over Brutes. Going deep, dialing up down the far sideline and close enough to a first down. This time caught by Sibyl. She had 20 catches during the regular season, Sarah, and that was a confident throw from the pocket. Yeah, very nice intermediate pass. Uh, that was very well seen by, uh, by Emmanuel. To, um, the short was taken, the deep was taken, so nice, smart decision uh, throwing it to uh, Sibyl. That ladies. was that was open in the, the for intermediate. For Brassard, that was her third INT in the last seven games. That's very impressive. So, playing it well. To the near side it comes. That's caught up ahead towards the sideline. Tackled by number 18 in Barbeau and caught by Gamo. She had 39 catches during the regular season. Marie-Lou, now we're starting to see a bit of rhythm here from BP. 
Yeah, absolutely. A nice job uh, calling the plays to get those windows outside. Uh, you know, you have some tough players in the middle for Montreal. So I think those windows on the sidelines are going to be their uh, best shot. Gamo had three games of 78 plus yards. Her best, I'm sorry, uh, Sarah, was against you guys. Eight catch for <laughs> 90 for two touchdowns. <laughs> and now, but I saw looking like she is edging close towards tying this game up at six. Dropping back, patience, middle, and that's a one hopper as that ball lacked the zip required, and it'll be second down coming up here for BP. What I love about Emmanuel Bronsard, though, is that she's a really competitive player. So no, no matter what, winning or losing, she's going to step up and she's going to try to make those play. And it's tough to get in her head. And a double formation to the left for Bronsard. Dropping back one step. Patience to the near side it comes. That's caught and up ahead and tackled flag on the play. Caught by Tocut, who had 34 catches this year. Had three sacks as well on the defensive side of things. And ladies, what did you see on that play that resulted in the flag being thrown by the referee? I am not sure it looked clean from here. But I'm sure Tara is making the right call as she usually does. The referees are never right, right? You guys <laughs> know that as players. They, they always get their call incorrect for one team and right for the other team. So OPI, and perhaps we'll get a replay on that and what came up here, but that's a big penalty going against BP at a crucial moment of their drive. So the replay... It is, but I don't think they got in, so here's Montreal have a choice to make. In that case, what would you do, ladies, here? Would you push them back? Because if they didn't get in, you're obviously going to push them back here, which would make it extremely long towards the end zone. It's hard to say against Bronsard because she loves the fact that she has some field and some depth to play with. So maybe getting her stuck at the one-yard line is not a terrible idea, you know? And now Alexis Gaumont trying to get a clarification from the referee about that call. And as a result, this will be moved back. Or now this will be third down here, so... So it'll be third down coming up here for BP. And looking to get their first six points of the day. They lost to Le Bleu 27-20 back in the regular season. Bronsard looking towards the middle. That's caught open and tackled the lip of the goal line. And that was brought down this time close enough to what should have been six points here. As in the nick of time, coming up with a big play was Martin. And now what is the play call would you, would you go with here at the lip of the goal line, ladies? Uh, something short at the beginning of the end zone, something deep uh, in the back of the end zone uh, always works. We just have to make sure that, you know, receivers are, are well-timed and that the, the distance between them is, is appropriate to avoid two, any traffic. Two to the right of Brassard. Looking towards the right, short, that's caught. Touchdown, BP, and a big response coming through for them. As Kurt Marsh came through on that touchdown grab, we were tied up at 6-6 here, great read by the quarterback yeah well then and you can see they play a lot together because as as soon as she gets off this cut she gets the ball and they really connect well a uh, big part is Galmon with the catch in fact during the regular season had five touchdowns and that's to her total now to take the lead for the first time we're gonna start over the middle and too much depth on that pass so a good looking drive for BP here ladies now for Le Bleu back for their third series in this first half here. What is the key for them now in trying to retake the lead once again? I think they just have to set the pace. Uh, keep, keep doing what they do best. Uh, execute s short passes until they, Le, Le Bleu put, um, jump on the, on the shorter routes. And then uh, Sandrine can showcase her arm and, and throw on top of everyone. Yeah, Gobe Huo had two INTs against BP in their first encounter in her end zone. Going towards the right. That is caught and a twist and a tackle by Farmer and caught by Cook Mosh, who had 30 catches during the regular season. And Jasmine Farmer was a chief destroyer on defense against Le Bleu during the regular season. Could she be a difference maker here and how this plays out, guys? Absolutely. And she knows Montreal's coaches very well. So I think she's confident coming in, coming in this game. Uh, she knows what to expect and she can just play her best. We're here at Papineau. It is 6 6 between two heavyweight teams right now. Who will be the queens in the matter after this game here? Will it be the sky blue or the royal blue? Going deep, deflected, loose ball up in the air and the telescopic arms coming through in that pass rush and a big play to make it a third down here 
on that moment. And well done by Kat Gaumont because you're going to need to put some pressure on Sandrine and try to hit to touch those ball uh, right at the quarterback. Otherwise, she is able to throw uh, at the perfect spot for her receivers. Gaumont, six pass deflections for the season, and that is a big one here to make it third down. And what is about 15 to 18 yards to the first down line? Two to the left. Gabayo looking towards the right. That's caught. Spin move up ahead. Gaum and up ahead to the first down of Moore. And a big catch right there for Kutmarsch. And that should be enough for a first down. So on third down, could not get that fourth down. And now it's going to be a new set of downs for the team white. Yeah, well then, about, uh, by Chloe Courtemont, she really uh, can get, gain those yards after the catch. Uh, her speed is uh, one of her strengths for sure. Two to the right. One now single on the left formation of the attacking front for Le Bleu. Just inside the BP territory here. 6-6 six, six game. Looking, launching over the middle, over the head, incomplete. And tended for Badu, and that will be second down here. So it feels like, ladies, that the middle of this defense is really making it difficult for the passing offers out there. Yeah, they seem to be putting a lot of pressure on uh, on the receivers and uh, taking away Sandrine's first read. I think uh, I think that's playing uh, with her her nerves a little bit. She's having a hard time setting her feet and going to her second option for sure. And we'll have to see if that might be a factor in the second half adjustments here. Again, it's still six six. We thought it would be the over with Las Vegas, but right now it's the under. So we'll see how this plays out moving forward in this game. Six six game. Two to the left, looking towards the left, waiting, launching deep down the end zone, deflected out of bounds, and well played by BP on that matchup here. And coming through was Berbiche, who had five PDs during the regular season, and the big one right there for BP. There seem to have, have, have had a little bit of confusion between Badu and, uh, and Irka in the... Yeah, you can see it right there. There were a lot of traffic over there. It was a jungle of arms and did not come through on the six points on that play. And now it's coming up to a big moment here of this drive. Going towards the right, that's caught. Up ahead, one move, two moves, and that is going to be caught for a seven-yard gain. Bastien, who had 17 catches or 16 catches in the regular season, and gets that a little bit closer. And now we're in the last roll of the dice here, ladies. What is the call that you would have as you try to get that six points in your favor? Uh, what looks to have been working for Ucam, I think it would work for Montreal uh, to just like flood one side because all the catches and the, the plays are well defended and uh, I think they're going to have to find some new plays. Stack formation to the right, trips that is. Waiting, patience, deep, <laughs> deflected and unfortunately that ball was zigging and Badu could not get that ball and it's a turnover on downs and they come up empty once more, Sarah. Are you surprised by the Bleu's offense so far, not able to find the rhythm and ingenuity so far? I am surprised. Uh, usually they execute um, maybe a little bit better, but I, I, I wouldn't bet against them, though, because I know that once they, they gain control of, um, of this game, uh, they could be deadly. So Brassard now has the hammer to give BP the lead here, 6-6 six, six game in this first half. And right now the rusher has to indicate who that is. And it's a game within a game, ladies, here of the mind games that is happening right now. And we're back underway. Brassard looking towards the middle. That's caught up ahead towards the near side. And a quick tackle this time coming through. And that will be second down coming up for BP as that was caught by number 14 in Sibyl, who had 20 catches during the regular season. And with those simple plays, you know, you still get about eight or nine yards and you don't have, you don't need more than that from a play just to get the first down and then score. So well done by BP. Right now it's lacking the, the main course so far of only 12 total points here, but perhaps we might see a flood of points on this ensuing drive coming up here for BP against Le Bleu. Two teams that combined to win 15 and one during the regular season. Here they are, the two big hitters in the finals. Brassard looking towards the left. That is caught in a quick tackle. Sibyl, her second catch on this drive and tackle this time by Badu. And now it's a quick reaction by the defense for Le Bleu. Yeah, very nice ball placement to the outside of the field to make it hard for the defense to actually put a hand on the ball because she, she was very tight on her, on her receiver. 
As we approach four minutes left here in this first half, is there a sense of who has the momentum right now, ladies? It's really tight. And I guess they just know each other too well just to have more points on the board at this point. Oh, and a beautiful catch by Lurie. And Turcotte with a big play and a big first down. That will prolong the drive. And during the regular season had 34 catches and six touchdown grabs. And that's a big catch right there to give BP a chance for the end zone now. As we're now approaching 3.40 left here in this first half. 6-6 six, six between these two teams. They went 27-20 the last time. And right now it's looking like it might be 20 points. First one to 20 might win. We're going to start pumping. Deep middle. Incomplete. And that was intended for Sibyl as she tried to go for a hat trick of catches here. And she almost had that, had her hands on it, but could not corral that ball cleanly. Yeah, but with Badu in, fr in front of you like that, it's always hard to concentrate to get the ball because she's such a talented player and she gets her hands on the ball more often than not. As we are now three minutes away from five plays here in this first half, a stack formation to the right of Brassard as she looks to move this ball up ahead. Looking over the middle, that's caught up towards the lip of the goal line. And Gamon with another big catch here in Sour. We're starting to see BP really find the rhythm on this drive. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're, they're simple plays, but effective. I don't think she threw a ball under five yards uh, this entire drive. So if she keeps it going, uh, we should see a Blurput score on this drive. Uh, Brassard using the arts and crafts on that play right there. And now with the double to the right, uh, looking towards the right. Patience, evading, looking, that corner, and was that in? Touchdown, BP, and a big catch from Tocut, and now 12-6 lead. And well done by Bronsard to get rid of that rusher. You know, you have to keep your eyes on the play, but also uh, know how to deal with that, that rusher that was right there. Uh, how do you do it, Sarah? I don't know how you do it. And here's a replay right here, and you can see the those hips. Ooh, nice move. Throwing on the run like that, too, it takes a lot of skill. Only very few have that skill here, ladies. I don't have that skill. Sarah does, though. Sarah Parker definitely does. <laughs> and now a double rush looking towards the middle, and now a 13-6 lead. And the theme sometimes is the extra point conversions here, and how important will it be now, given how close this game is with a seven-point gap? I mean, last game was, was super close, and all the games they played uh, were pretty tight, so it is very important. Uh, François Bougie always have a way though to find some uh, some new plays for the converts so I'm eager to see Montreal go now. So for Go Bayou what? She's had a tough start, a disjointed effort so far by the Blues offense and looking to get back to, and this game to parity as they are in red ink down by seven an incomplete pass and Sarah as a quarterback how frustrating can it be with the rhythm not being there for this Blues offense? I mean, it is it is frustrating, but uh, it's it's important to keep your your head in the game and uh, stick to basics and try and gain that confidence back with a lot of completions. Simple geometry sometimes is required, and here we are inside a minute, deep middle. That's caught up at to the near midfield strip, and that is going to be close enough. Renault gaining that catch. He had 33 during the regular season, and now with about 33 seconds left, how do you break this down here in terms of trying to get the points with plays coming up? I think Sandrine just find her answer, just stop throwing uh, to Jasmine Farmer uh, on the BP team. She's She's been there every time and it's hard to complete on her side, so go in the middle or somewhere else. And now double formation to the wars the left. Patience over the middle, incomplete. That had too much fizz on that pass. It looked like it was going to go to Kurt Marsh on that play, and it's now incomplete. So four plays left. So how would you break it down here, ladies, try to get that in their favor? Uh, I would stick to um, a simple comeback play to get the first down and then uh, go from there. Four plays left, try and get that first down. Stuff not been achieved. Double now to the right of the formation. Looking, pumping, deep. Player open, incomplete. And Jennifer Renault, was that the right call here? I think it was. I think they have to try something new. Uh, BP were expecting some flat and some uh, routes in the middle. 
it was a nice try, but I think four plays is more than enough for BP to score right now. So Montreal's really got to check those deep routes. So with three plays left here, Sarah. Oh, three plays. Well, now okay. with three plays left here, Sarah, how would you break it down with them trying to go the length of the field to perhaps get themselves a two-score lead? So I would stick to the middle. Her 15-yard passes down the middle just to gain a bit of, of yardage and then try and take maybe one or two shots deep. And well defended and a flag on the play. And it appears that Barbeau was a little handsy on that. And that might move the football up and keep the three plays intact going towards the midfield stripe. And the call will now be administered and it looks like it will be illegal. PI on the defense. PI, yeah. So, so it still remains three plays and they got three yards out of here, ladies. Absolutely, this is a dangerous game to play for Montreal. But is this what you call high risk, high reward now and trying to just get back momentum here? Because again, these have not found that cutting edge required to get this game in their favor. I guess so, but we're still early in the game. You know, it's just 13 to 6. Uh, the thing you do not want to is give BP some more points before the half. Two to the right. Bronsard looking towards the right. Middle. That is caught. Up ahead, midfield. That's going to be enough for a first down. Very close enough. And that was caught this time by Gamol and brought down by number four in Landry, who had four INTs during the regular season. And it'll be first down and two plays left. So how do we break it down here, ladies? Do we go half the field or maybe go for the kill shot to surprise them? I would go for the kill shot. That's how quarterback I would, thinks, I would right? send three deep. That's not. That's why I'm not quarterback. I would go a half field and just try to gain some yards. <laughs> you might get stressed out of it being a quarterback. For not sure. the easiest position to play out there. A 13-6 lead for BP against Le Bleu. Plenty of time. Deflected. Well played this time on the pass rush coming through. And Olmont, who had one sack, four NTs, and one pick six, coming through on a big pass rush now with one play left. Very important play by Noemi Alman here, giving the defense a little break. So now they are about 20 yards away from the touchdown. And with one play left, they will have three in the end zone. And you wonder if maybe a double rush might be administered here with one play left. 13-6 lead before we hit halftime. Second quarterback dropping. It goes to the second quarterback. Pressure, short pass, that's caught. Brassard is tackled, and that will be that. And at the end of the first half. And it was well thought by BP, but I think Montreal's defense, uh, they've seen it coming. They just... Played well, stayed calm, and really they just had to get the flag before the touchdown. Sarah, from the quarterback position here, who's had the better effort so far? It feels like Bronson has had the better game so far in this game, first half. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can tell that she she's playing more confident than uh, Sandrine on the other side. So if she uh, keeps that confidence and her, her receivers keep catching the ball and maintains that confidence in uh, in their quarterback, uh, I think I think they, they're set for the game. So, Marie-Lou, we look at the defenses. Both have played very well. Who do you get the edge so far going towards the second half? It's hard to say. I mean, Bronsard, she saw some really interesting holes in the defense, uh, but I think Montreal still came up with some big plays. Uh, Noemi Alman just had a great rush. Uh, Sandrine just got to find her pace and maybe slow down a little bit because right. I feel she had like a lot of nerves right now. If you guys had to pick one player each, I'll start with you, Sarah. Who is the one player you're looking at in the second half that could have an influence in this game? Uh, if Sandrine steps it up, I mean, she's a she's an awesome quarterback. She her ball placement is uh, perfect. She just has to get into the the right mindset and uh, make the reads that she she usually does. And I think that that can make a, a very big difference in this game uh, to give their offense momentum. Marilou, who's that player for you in your mind that can really um, step up? I'd say not stepping up because she's already doing a great job, but Jasmine Farmer, uh, she's had some great tackles, great uh, deflection. So just keep it up and uh, keep Sandrine uh, stressed out. Uh, that would uh, give her advantage. You guys have been in this position before, a one-score lead at halftime. What's being discussed in the huddles right now as we go towards the second half? I think for BP, just keep going, stay calm, stay focused. Uh, it's going great. And for Montreal, maybe switch things up. Uh, find some momentum. You can hear them scream uh, to, get <laughs> <laughs> to get some hype in. So for sure that, yeah. Yeah, so a bit more energy on the, on the yeah. Montreal side for sure. And uh, 
on the blue put side uh, yeah just keep it safe they, they threw a pick on the first play being greedy so i would just stick to stick to the basics until um until they have uh, the the girls open on the on the when, deep route when you say keep it safe does that mean you, you play more of a prevent you try and manage the football game at that time or you want to just keep the flow going just keep the flow going uh calling plays that work and that uh have the like sure plays that that will that they know that their receivers are going to be open on are you surprised by the deep ball ladies how it's not been connecting for either side absolutely but i think the defense are playing great uh in the the deep zone uh bp just find their pace on the outside in the flats uh they should keep going with that because montreal really uh, alex knows how sandrine Bronsard can, uh, sorry emmanuel Bronsard can throw right deep. right yeah <laughs> I'm actually not that surprised because I feel like these teams, when they compete against each other and they know how athletic the the, the receiver core is, right. um, they they're extra careful on the deep on the deep balls. So I think uh, I think there's a reason why they haven't been throwing uh, any any deep routes. Well, we'll get right now for the second half here, as this game has definitely. Uh, when you look at the fact that, given both teams are prolific offensively speaking here. 13-6 game here, but again, 27-20 was the last time they played each other. Yeah. And I think we might be into that where maybe the first team to 20 might be your champion by the end of the night. It depends. Maybe the offense are going to find some pace because they are playing pretty slow. We've seen them uh, play uh, more quickly and more efficiently. But uh, I believe the coaches are analyzing a lot of the defense on the other sides. So uh, that explained the slow pace. Well, it's been a compelling watch with these two teams here with one more half to go plus five plays. And now the question that will come up here in this game of Jeopardy is who can come up with that bigger play? We've seen BP come up with some big plays, but now for Le Bleu, can they now come up with a hammer shot in this matchup? The defense had a pick on the first drive, so I hope they can do it again to uh, spice it up a little bit. Well, spice is required in this game that has <laughs> lacked that type of ingredients in the, in the main course of its menu here. As we get ready for the second half here, 13 6 lead from Papineau. And BP has been off looking to ruin the perfect season of Le Bleu, who are 8 0, and they gave BP their one loss this regular season. Brassard looking towards the right, open, and that had too much depth on that pass here. A bit twitchy on that throw. I think it was just overthrown a little bit. She she seemed to uh, to have perfect control, so I think just um, focusing on on having that ball a little bit lower should uh, should work on the next on the next try. Yeah, thirteen six lead. That first play of the second half is we're uh, less than a minute into this second half. Two to the right, one to the left of the formation. Bogosar looking towards the middle of the field. Has time, deep middle, and incomplete. Flag in the play intended for Jokut. But it appears that Bastien was a little bit too early on that, and she will be called for a penalty on that, ladies. That's too bad because she really saw the play coming. You can see just her coming in close. And you can see uh, the team bench for Le Bleu not happy with. Absolutely not. I think it was a great defensive play. And they are going to challenge that, I believe. And there is replay here. So, ladies, we'll use your – see, I have to wear glasses. I can't see anything. You guys have 20-20 vision. So, we'll have the replay here for you guys to assess if this was a penalty or not. And so, they'll go into the uh, booth, wherever the booth is. I have no idea what the booth is, but uh, it's somewhere here. <laughs> so, let's see what the replay will indicate to us now. As it appears that pass interference might have been the call. It was the call, but was that – the decision here. So let's see what we have coming up on the replay, which should be coming up any second now. I'd like to buy more time. Here we yeah, go. There it is. So over the middle. I mean, she did have a hand uh, that was not on the ball and was actually on the player, but those, those dig are so hard to cover because the player just runs into you. So, what do you think right now? Do you think that was PI or some sort of interference? So, you can see the left hand right there, right? She got above. She got above Tokhan on that play. But what do you think right there? I, that might be close. That's a bang-bang play on that situation. Both players were coming 
towards each other at a, at a pretty high speed. So I, I myself would have put my hand out that way just to try and, and soften the blow a little bit. I don't think that her intention was to, uh, to, to, yeah, to do an interference, but, but yeah. No matter the intention. Let's no matter the intention, she, she did have a hand on Zuhkut. And yeah, you can see from this angle that she's actually kind of jumping over her or like towards her, uh, which is not allowed. You really have to play the ball, uh, not getting in the off the offensive player's way. See, from the opposite angle that we have from the far side camera, it shows a different view of what the play ended up being. So now the question is for the head referees or the referees now in charge, what is going to be the call? So it's a tough call because. In flag football, you're not supposed to have any contact, but obviously, once the ball gets in the air, uh, so I think we'll have the call, yeah. and uh, it appears we won't ruin it for the viewers. <laughs> we really know the answer to the question there. We'll let Tara has her moment. Yeah, it, it definitely was a bang bang play. It wasn't one of those like, oh my god, intentional foul here, but they were definitely both going for the ball. 100% they're going for the ball, right? It's the question of the angle and. Uh, I think there'll be one more look at this. It appears here, a re-rack of this replay. So the clock to stop here, we're about less than two minutes into the second half as the officials converse and now they'll come back on the field. Let's see what the call is officially from the head official. So ladies, no flag in the play. And that dodges a bullet for Le Bleu as the right challenge was called on that moment. Yeah, and with the rules, uh, Montreal's did win the challenge, so they are going to have uh, the chance to have another one. If they had lost, uh, it would have been their only one. Thank God for replays. If we yeah. had during the regular season, we have a much more uh, harmony within the player re ref relationships in the FPF. It was a close call, though. No question it was. So it'll be third down coming up here for BP. Brassard, deep on a one hopper, and that was intended for Gamol. And we're starting to see that Gamal has become the chief player for her on these passes. So far, she, she diversify the passing options. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, in in the final, especially when uh, the the score is this tight, we want to uh, to have a bit of variety and keep things uh, keep things new for for the defense of the other team. One more play to get that first down. Three literally loitering at the line of scrimmage, the line of first down. That's going deep. That is caught, and that is going to be tackled right away as Turcotte, about four or five yards short and brought down this time by Landry. So Le Bleu get the ball back here. A huge stop on defense on the opening drive of the second half. And it's time to shine for Sandrine. and I hope those uh, pep talk in the, the halftime will pay off. They did score 52 points against Strangers. That probably won't be reached this evening. But they definitely have the firepower and the artillery of options. And now for Gobehua, can she get that going in the right direction? Short pass. That's caught to the left side. And that will be devoured right away by Renault. And brought down quickly this time by her counter, number eight in Banal. So it will be second down coming up. And so we're seeing a slower start right now, taking their time here. And this, again, is the composure required here because, you know, when the heart's pounding the back of the ribcage, it can definitely change the dynamics of how you see things. Plenty of time now. Going to the left side, that's caught and a clattering of bodies here. As Genius, Genius got that through, it'll be third down, seven yard gain on that play here. So. And you see Sandrine taking her time with the ball, but I believe she could uh, get it out a bit faster and it could really help them uh, complete those passes. There'll be trips now, stack for Richard to the right of the attack in front. What is the play call here? Looking, stepping up, avoids the sack, going deep, incomplete. Too much depth on that play here. And Sarah, you being the quarterback here, it felt like she was a bit rushed on that throw. Yeah, for sure. The pressure of the rusher is uh, is coming in pretty quickly. So uh, I I definitely feel her um, getting getting that much pressure and trying to make the right reads is, is difficult, especially in these high 
high uh, pressure situations in the finals. Well, crucial importance right now for Les Bleus trying to get themselves back in parity here, down by a score of 13 6. They have been in Reading for most of this football game here in this matchup in the Tier 1 final. Tom, short middle, that's caught, and that's fired in with Fizz in that, and a huge catch by Kutmarsh, and that's a big first down for this Bleu's offense. Yeah, they knew exactly where the first down was. She went just over it, and they got it, and it was a nice play for Montreal. And with that, a new set of downs here, and that kind of eases the stress, though, would it not, ladies, that you get that first down, and now you have plenty of options to work with as you're inside the BP territory. Yeah, definitely. Two to the right, one to the left of the formation. Go by here, what? Looking, has time, going deep, going open, incomplete. And Badu was right there, but that just had the wrong trajectory on the dip of the football. And you have those typical plays uh, from Liebler uh, where they go all hooks and in the flats all game. And then once in a and every time they go hooks and up or uh, flatten up, and it really surprises you as a defense. Second down inside the BP territory. The Bleu are down by a score of 13-6 as we are approaching 16 minutes left here in this second half. Going to the right, that is caught, and right away with the tackle is Longay, and that is caught by number 11 in Courtmarche. It'll be third down come up here on this drive. And you can see now the hooks was open because they just got beaten deep by hooks and up. So they got to respect the players a little bit more. Is this now the time, Sarah, to maybe pump and go deep here? Because you kind of keep them a little bit honest. Uh, so, yeah, Badu was clearly open in the deep, uh, the shot before. So if, if they can keep being open in the... And there's a deep ball right there, incomplete. No flag on the play intended for Renault. And now a big down coming up here, fourth down that is. And there's only one route, one option here, and that's the end zone, ladies. I can see your face right now. It is do. hard to do. As a defense, I love those fourth and very long because you can just see the play uh, develop, and it's easy to read, and you have the time to, you know, figure out your things in defense. So offensively, uh, I don't know, Sarah, you're in a better position than me. You have to throw to on say. your best matchup. Your, your player that you trust the most on a jump ball. That's well, where the ball's going. <laughs> they call the timeout now. So they'll have a few more seconds to assess their options. And with where they're positioned right now, which I believe it's about 16, if not 15 yards from the end zone, what are you calling in that hole right now to get that six points? So they just brought in a very physical player. Uh, they switched uh, a player for Erika Bastien. Uh, she's actually a, I, uh, she plays soccer uh, for the Carabin. It's terrible play against against her. She's, she's a very so physical, oh, you know, she's I a very her. physical yeah, yeah, player. Oh yeah, she's a monster in the pitch. I've called a few of those. <laughs> yeah, so yes. I, I'm not surprised that they brought her in for this play. They, they probably brought her in for her to make some room in the end zone and try and come, come out with that ball. And you also have Badu, a very experienced uh, player who is able to make those jumbo catches. Yeah. And definitely I would go uh, on the outside because this is where you have the leverage uh, as an offensive player. Plenty of twitch, plenty of jeopardy in this game here. A one-score lead here for BP over Les Bleus. It has been uh, uh, unhinged perhaps. It's been one of those games which has lacked that... Uh, that panache that we've witnessed from these two teams this year that you guys have witnessed firsthand for many years of watching these teams grow. And this could be a pivotal moment in this game here that if Le Bleu doesn't score and BB comes back to score, that means you're done by two scores with very little time left here in the second half. Yeah, and you can see uh, Jasmine Farmer telling her players to be patient and just wait for the ball because they have the advantage here as a, the defense. Last roll of the dice on this drive. Can they get the crucial six points required? Going deep, that's caught. And that is gonna be short of a touchdown. And Bastien was the target. You guys made that call, but they came up two yards short and a big stop for BP. And do you think now momentum is in the team of Sky Blue uniforms? In the second half, I'd say that they, they've been a, a little bit less connected. So uh, if they gain the confidence they had in the first half, uh, I think this drive should go in their favor. 
And this could be a pivotal drive here for BP and trying to get themselves a two-score lead. To the near sideline, that is caught. And a quick turn up to the field. And Ducat gets another catch on that play. And it will be second down as Barbeau in on the tackle. And now those sidelines are being used to the advantage of BP so far in this drive and so far in the second half. So Bronsar has had a pretty effective game, two to the left of Bronsar trying to get this through. Second down, Bronsar looking towards the left, that's deep, that's caught, that's a first down and more, and a big play this time coming through for Sibyl, who has four catches on the last couple of drives and a big play by BP. And she's just working those like middle ground so well you know those routes between 8 and 12 yards uh, that's their sweet spot right now and Montreal has a hard time defending it looking to add an insurance policy up by a score 13-6 two to the left one to the right can Le Bleu come up with a big intervention that's caught that's a good for about 10 yards right there and again a big catch by Gamal who's been the stick mover for this BP offense. And the BP offense is just getting this defense, uh, this Montreal defense uh, so deep so they can connect well uh, in the flat. And I think they're doing a very great job at just gaining yards and driving. As we approach 12.45 left here in this ball game, a 13-6 lead, two to the left again for the offense for BP. Brassard looking towards the left, going towards the near side right now. is caught, a diving catch like a second baseman out there. And now at the lip of the goal line, and it will be third down coming up here. And Sarah, as a quarterback, what are your passing options going towards this play coming up? Um, so all the crossing routes with uh, high speed and uh, her having a good connection with her receiver seems to be working pretty well. So I would stick to the same thing. And we'll see if those cross routes might come to fruition here on this pivotal moment for this BP offense. Brassard, deep breath, going towards the left. That is oh. caught for the touchdown. And an amazing throw exactly where the only the receiver could catch this ball because Erika Bastien was there and she almost got her hand on the ball. A game of interest becomes millimeters, and that was a huge play right there for BP. As Bouchard getting that touchdown grab, she had five during the regular season, and now a 19-6 lead. And you wonder, regardless of the extra point or not, the and added insurance policy for BP to have a two-score lead. You wonder now if LeBleu might have to dial it up here and maybe take some more risks with their offense coming up. Second quarterback in play. Plenty of time to work with. Going cross by, that is caught. And a convert is good. And that's a massive, massive moment in this matchup here. Well and done by BP getting this second quarterback to oblige the Montreal's defense to get a second rush. And then they kind of got confused uh, with whose man was whose. So well done uh, for the play call. Larry was actually a quarterback in, uh, in CJP at, at the Edouard Montpetit. You are right. That is a rival <laughs> of your former siege up that you went to, that you were a very dominant force out there, uh, Miss Parker. And now a dominant force will be required for this Le Bleu offense. You're down by two scores. They'll have to dial it up. Going deep. That's caught first, uh, close enough for first down here. That's caught this time by Bodo Badu, and that is a big play. Because it felt like on first downs here for Le Bleu, they've not been able to get that completion, but that's a big play right there for them. I love how confident Leibler looks right now. No huddle, just getting in the, getting the passes done, and I think it's going to work out. And now quickly working towards the near side. That's caught. That's enough for a first down and a clattering of bodies right there. And there's a flag on the play. And now Sarah and Marilou, we're seeing a no huddle offense here. I think that might be their uh, template the rest of the way. Yeah, I love it, and I love the fact that they. We, we just said the pace was slow. It was a slow-paced game. Uh, I think they were over-analyzing things, so maybe no huddle and uh, getting the ball out quicker is going to help them a lot. Well, they have to unlock this BP defense, which they've not been able to do since the early part of this first half. Can they kick down this door to get it back down to a one-score deficit? Looking deep middle. That is caught. Touchdown. Breathtaking. Silky pass by a silky player. And now a one-score game has evolved for this matchup 
Yeah, very nice grab by Erika Basti. Yeah, you can see the replay right there. And she put Sarah a nice touch on that throw to Bastien. And, and she use she usually uh, plays a goaler in soccer, so you can see those hands uh, training paying off right now. I don't know about that, Marilou. You know, goalkeepers have a <laughs> fidgety way of playing that position, and now it's a nine-point lead, so they have to hit this convert to make it a one-score game. Big moment. That is deflected, and that might be a moment that we look back here now, down by nine. So in this case here for Le Bleu, you're down by two scores. How do you roll it up here on defense? Or do you dial up here and try to take some more risks and try to create a turnover moving forward? So if I, if I were Bleu Pud, I would keep things simple, avoid uh, making mistakes and giving Montreal, uh, or I should say Le Bleu, giving them the ball back just because that touchdown gave them a little bit of momentum. So just trying to uh, eat up as much as a as much of the time on the clock as possible. And with that, a 21-12 lead over the middle. That's caught through the jungle of arms. And a big play this time coming through for Sibyl, who has been a stick mover for this BP offense tonight. A 21-12 lead here from Papineau. And with about less than eight to go in this matchup, you want to get a quick four and out here to get this ball back with Tom to work with, down by two scores. And for Bransar, she gets the last right of passage here, trying to get this to go through. Looking towards the left, waiting, swung to the near side, an incomplete, and now a pivotal third down coming up here as that ball was intended for Sibyl. And now, ladies, what is the call in your mind here on a third and long coming up before the first down marker at the midfield stripe? They just got to keep doing what they do best, uh, running across the field and Emmanuel Bronsard putting those balls just in front of the receiver. It's been working all game long, and I think this is uh, the Montreal's defense weakne uh, weakness. For Le Bleu, they need two more stops to uh, prevent a first down to happen and get the ball back. This is a big play for Bronsard. Looking towards the near side. That is deflected up in the air and incomplete. And that was close to being picked off, perhaps, as it was intended for Gamon. And now Sarah is a quarterback here. Are you starting to get a little bit nervous on how this is starting to not go your way on this drive? Uh, I think that they have some some good core plays. Uh, Le Bleu Poud and getting some, some simple throws uh, that are deep enough to get them a first down, so I'm not too worried. Fourth down. Could this change the script of this storyline? To the far side, that's open. First down, up the sideline, and a big play this time coming through for Gamal. And we talked about the game of inches, and that was ever so close to being stopped at the, at the midfield stripe. And now U of M is now on their heels. And if they keep going like this, I think uh, Gamal really has a shot of being MVP this game. Uh, she's just connecting very well with Bronsard, uh, who is also doing a great job and could could actually end up with the MVP title. Six minutes left here. Le Bleu have been second best in this game today. BP now smelling that they can get more points here and perhaps the victory. Towards the left, that is caught. Up the sidelines, nice pivot jab move right there. This time by Bouchard, and she was tackled quickly enough by Landry. And now with about 5.54 left, Sarah as a quarterback is now taking it into cruise control, knowing that the clock is in your favor. Uh, so yeah, I would still stick with uh, with some some simple plays, or uh, and maybe taking a shot in the deep if uh, if one of the girls are open because she seems to be pretty confident with uh, with making her big throws. Brassard looking towards left. That's quickly played in a one hopper, and that was intended for Sibyl as she saw something quickly but could not connect as she desired, and now it remains 21-12 with about 5-10 left in this ball game. And I know it's not their style, uh, the Montreal defense, but they need to be a bit more aggressive uh, starting as of right now. Two to the right of the formation. U of M's got about five, now make it four on the lip of the goal line. Could this be the passport to victory here for BP? Brassard, deep middle. That's through a sea of hands, and that could have been picked going the other way. And that was a very risky throw there, Sarah, by Bronsal. Yeah, there was a lot of traffic down the middle. I would have waited for, for my receivers to kind of get out of traffic before throwing that ball. And now could they come up with a moment of genius here for BP? And it appears, actually, Gomal talking to 
one of his players here. And a timeout called by BP. So they call a timeout to calm things down here with about 417 left, give or take here. Now, Lou, what can be the play call in trying to put this U of M team to the sword? Well, they did lose uh, their main receiver, and also she is the snapper, so they have to change uh, things up a bit. But they got Jasmine Farmer in, and uh, she's also a great receiver as well as a great defender. So I don't know. I would say once again, uh, run across the field, but get those uh, crossing routes uh, that have been working on Montreal's defense, uh, and they might get a shot. It's actually 10 yards uh it's a, it's a good challenge for Balsall. So, Sarah, in this case here, you know, we know the snap or quarterback exchange is such a vital component to any offense to flourish. How important is it just to keep it simple for the snapper and just let them know, hey, just take it easy and just keep that snap very simple? Well, Laurie actually took uh, Catherine's spot on um, at snapper, and I... I wouldn't be too worried. She's the one that uh, may, made the diving catches today. So if she ever has to catch the ball in traffic, I know she, she's going to come out with the ball. To add some insurance policy to this lead, up by nine. Going to the near side. That's caught through traffic, flagging the play. And that will be a penalty against U of M. But they come up short on that attempt. For, and Alexi Gomal will literally on the other side of the football field trying to angle his way. And uh, you can see right there, ladies, from our angle, it was definitely a lot of contact. In that but like play. you said, Laurie coming in with the big catch in the traffic, she's a, she's a really great receiver. And she is small, but she is really physical. The good news is for BP is that they still have possession, but the bad news for Le Bleu, the clock is rolling right now. I think Laurie has been making a, a big difference in this game, making all those diving catches. And whenever the ball isn't perfectly placed, uh, catching her, her quarterback's ball. Uh, so, I, so I really think that she she was a crucial part of their offense today. And we are, we are south, we are, we're south of four. And BP thought they could challenge that play, but the, the they, they could challenge it, but they, they won't, uh, by the words of wisdom from the sidelines here. But uh, And now the good news is that they're literally knocking at the door. Could this be the passport to victory here at the borderline? Could they get this through with ease and get themselves a vital six points? Second quarterback dropping. Open. Incomplete. Caught in two minds was that football pass intended for Sibyl. They did manage to get the defense so confused uh, that they have they had an open receiver like that. It is rare uh, to see at this level someone as open as she was. It's just too bad she didn't finish the job. They still have three downs to go, so I'm pretty confident. Le Bleu needs three more prayers to go in their favor. Can they get this in their favor right now with that incompletion on the previous play? Two to the left of Gonsal. Drop it back, second quarterback. Here's space to work with. Rolling, looking, running, and down at the lip of the goal. And once again, great Can intervention. Can she run, though? Caron in on the tackle, and Turcotte stopped. And now we're starting to see this U of M defense bending, but not breaking here, ladies. And that is a red zone moment there, right? So so now for U of M, can they come up with some more full concentration and trying to get themselves the ball back? Again, they're down by a nine, so they have to get two scores here with the clock running down inside of two. I think the key is communication because uh, the BP team is sending them different plays and different looks. Brassard looking for the kill shot. Plenty of time. Looking, pumping, evading, back in the end zone, incomplete, and Bastien had her hands on that football, but could not come up with a big iron team in the back of the end zone. It's like you are cursed when you play defense, so as a receiver, you're going to catch everything, but as soon as you, you are in defense playing safety or DB, uh, it's like your hand disappears sometimes. <laughs> Well, you know, that's why they play DB, right? You don't have the hands. So <laughs> in, in but case. Bastien did come up with a great catch to score the only, uh, the second touchdown of Le Bleu. Could be a mindset sometimes. You never <laughs> know here. 
So, Sarah, as a quarterback now, you're ever so close to getting the, the biggest points of your season. We've seen a melange of plays of the, of the crosses, second quarterback dropping here. Do you keep it simple here and try to get that six points in your favor? Uh, I would actually try and, and change things up a, a little bit. Uh, they haven't sent anyone in the corner to the left side, so I would probably have a couple of routes uh, crossing just in case that they play man-to-man uh, -man and uh, have someone in the, that top left corner uh, for the ball. If you look at U of M this year, they only had six sacks, so the pass rush has been irrelevant for them this year. So ladies, can they get that sack? and really put uh, BP on their heels late in this matchup. What I like, though, about uh, the rushing strategy of uh, UDM is that they keep changing the rusher, and sometimes that could be destabili destabilizing for the quarterback yeah. because it's always a different style. Uh, sometimes the hands are they're up, sometimes you're going for the flag. So maybe they don't have a lot of sacks, but I, I think they're still putting pressure on. It's five plays, so we're now down to the last rights. Brassard underneath the center. Backing, looking, middle, game, set, match, BP. Well done. Gamon with the kill shot, putting Le Bleu to the sword. And for BP, they are on their way to becoming the women's champions of Tier 1 in FPF. Once again, Bronsard managed to find Gaumont in the end zone. It's like she is her go-to whenever she's in trouble because you can see her first read wasn't uh, there, but well done. And to put the gloss on this victory, that is caught to make it a 28-12 game. And Les Bleus are going to experience their first taste of defeat this year. And, and it is done! And the Queens of the Manor is in sky blue as BP winning the Quebec champions of FPF. Sarah, your thoughts on this game or how it played out? Le Bleu did not have an answer to the BP offense and defense tonight. No, uh, unfortunately, uh, Le Bleu came up short to uh, Bleu Poudre. But uh, both teams played uh, an amazing game. Uh, the, the defense on uh, Les Bleus side had a, a tough job to do today against uh, Emmanuel Bronsard and her, her squad of, of receivers. But um, very impressive game. Uh, I was happy I was here to, to watch and to commentate. So thank you for having me. And uh, will this uh, game have a similar outcome when they play against each other at the Canadian Championships uh, next weekend? Well, so there's, we'll there is, to use a basketball example, North Carolina played Duke in men's basketball. They, it was a big game by Carolina to beat Duke, who were heavily favored. And then the reaping ma matchup, Carolina won. So here we go. We're going to have the trophy presentation here for BP. Here we go. Thanks, Mo. Donc, uh, félicitations, les filles. Un, un bon match de championnat. Donc, uh, Jasmine Farmer, la capitaine de l'équipe. Je te présente le trophée Bleu Poudre, championne. On a aussi une plaque à donner euh, à la, la joueuse, euh, la MVP du, euh, des finales, puis ça va à Catherine Gaumont. Gaumont a some massive plays. Puis finalement, la bannière euh, pour les filles. Donc, félicitations à Bleu Poudre. And the banner, a new addition to the FPF world of the uh, championship banner here. As look at the sign at the bottom where the white part is. This uh, league just keeps improving in so many ways. Every year there's something new and I love this about this league. And the best photo in team sports is the championship photo here. And we are wishing both teams good luck. Good luck for next weekend. Uh, I hope they can have more matchups like that. Yeah, and uh, as we look at this game here, ladies, and uh, definitely was one of those games where if we look at it from the start to finish here, it felt like Le Bleu never got in rhythm. And they were kind of chasing the game, then controlling the narrative of what it's supposed to be in this matchup. Yeah, so I think they they were maybe over analyzing stuff or not 
getting the ball out uh, as quickly as they, they should be or as they, they usually do. So, um, yeah, I think maybe they they should work a little bit on their, their maybe uh, a little bit of their ex execution before next weekend. But they started so well with that pick, uh, the, the first drive. Uh, I guess they just didn't capitalize on it, and uh, they should have. When you look at uh, BP's offense, when they were cornered, they came up with big plays, a big first down, a big long play, and touchdowns here. How important was the calm demeanor of the quarterback play that they had today from Brassard to win this matchup? So um, I think having a confident quarterback that's uh, calm and collected has a huge impact on the entire team. So I think the fact that maybe Sandrine was a little bit more nervous today and she wasn't really um, confident in her, in her playing style might have uh, had an effect on uh, on their team today. It, what's, what's, what I find more impressive is that this BP defense held the bit to 12 points, right? You talk about this year where seven of 10 games, you had 30 plus points, including 52 in the regular season. That's an impressive thing to do with this high octane offense of Le Bleu. Absolutely, but they know each other so well. They play university, they play tournaments. Uh, the coaches, uh, they know each other from way back then. So I guess the fact that Montreal really kept it simple, uh, the BP defense knew what was coming and the coaches did a, a great job at calling the defense. And I think when they, they play against other teams, uh, they have a hard time containing all the athletes on both teams. Right. But I think that now that they have a matchup that have athletes on uh, on both teams, the, the game is completely different. So moving ahead, you guys firsthand saw the Women's League evolve in FPF. Yeah. How excited are you to see what the future holds, given that we're starting to see the talent level really step up in weight class every year for the Women's League as we move along in FPF? I think it's very encouraging for, for the sport and the girls uh, just to have uh, another league where we can uh, play against each other and compete and, and get better. You only get better when you play against strong competition. So uh, for sure, this league is going to help us uh, evolve as players and also uh, help the sport evolve uh, and be, be competitive when we get to those big international tournaments and we can actually compare to, uh, to the states and stuff. And it's nice to know that even when we're going to finish university, we're going to have a place to play uh, together and against each other uh, for sure. So the familiarity is very important here. So uh, it's, it's cool to see this happen. So looking ahead here, how eager are you to get back into playing again? I know for, for Concordia, it wasn't what you wanted. And unfortunately for you, Meridou, that you've been sidetracked by an injury. So chomping the bit here, I would imagine, ladies, to get back in the football field at, at a sooner date than before. Well, we are just two very uh, hard workers here, so anytime we could get on a field, uh, we do. Uh, personally, I'm even looking forward to play, even if I'm injured, uh, maybe before the surgery. Uh, but that's just who I am, and uh, I, I always have uh, the, the occasion uh, to play. Well, well, ladies, if you're free, we, we have uh, our road show for the, for the other men's guys. If you want to come <laughs> join us here in the booth, we do that, though. But uh, fantastic job by you two for both finals here. Uh, final words as we wrap up. Oh well, th thank you for for having me for sure and for for inviting me. Uh, I had a blast. This was super new for me. Um, I was a little nervous at first. But, nervous. Uh, <laughs> I was so nervous the first game. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I appreciate the the new experience and um, and congrats to both teams. Uh, and I'm looking forward to maybe next uh, next. Uh, next season to be playing instead of commentating. <laughs> yeah, you might not be here in the booth with us. Marilou, final thoughts on this game? Uh, well, thank you very much to Factus and Rob, uh, including uh, the girls, athletes on and off the field. And uh, we had a blast, so thank you. Ladies, thank you very much here. Fantastic finals we had. We had a, a tier one final that had plenty of jeopardy and twitch, and we saw it towards the end. And the BP wins the tier one, and a great game as well. So on behalf of the staff crew here, we wish you a good evening, and we'll see you next season. More women to fly so far right after. Good.